Hey, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Astroneer. Today is Astroneer Tuesdays. I do apologize for being a little bit late behind and behind the schedule, but today is Astroneer Tuesdays, and so uh, we're gonna get going on some Astroneer just to have some fun. Pull up my streamer moderation tab because I forgot to do that before a stream. Real fast. And you did, please. Yes, maybe. Okay, cool. All right, we're good. Um, so we're gonna work on the Novus project today. Uh, I'm at my main base because I was doing some uh, random smelting work. Well, not random. I was smelting titanium, as I've been doing for the past couple of days. And we're gonna head off to uh, Novus. I haven't done a whole bunch of Novus project very recently, but we are on. Round 47 today. God like, hello. Um, we're on round 47 today, and we will be... Elvis go. Ah, there it is. I'm just blind. Uh, we'll be work be doing the entire round. Maybe a second round, depending on how things go. Uh, yeah. So we're back with hydrogen, and the um, yeah the shredder is just completely closed for some reason. Kind of cool. Don't... So I've been doing a bunch of Nova's project cleanup on the way, and I've also started getting ready for the next round and everything like that. But I only really started like the basic printing. I didn't start all of the extra fun stuff. Uh, we'll start the silos in about now. There we go. And also, I found um, all of this stuff hiding below the uh, hiding below the ground. But yeah, I guess that explains all the times where I've had missing silos or missing anything. Uh, so I also have this titanium that I have been very carefully farming up over significant periods of time for the uh, for the project. Should be good on that titanium for the next while. Needs up two of them per round, so that'll last us a couple of weeks. Hey look, another um, silo to add to the spare parts. There we go. That's not uh, the ones that has been printed yet. Is my mic working okay? Yeah. If anybody's uh, if anybody's watching, let me know if the music and sound quality is up to par. Uh, hey, welcome, Master Dude. Congratulations on being first. Um, yeah, I hope I hope my mic and music are balanced correctly. I haven't used music in a little bit due to having um, just using DSP instead of this music, but yeah, today we're going to work on these bombs and use the, fa use the factory um, instead of doing it manually. I'm lazy, but the good kind of lazy. Everything sounds great? Awesome. That is what I like to hear. So, Astrodude, I have been farming up just a little bit of titanium, you might see. Should keep us going for the next couple of rounds. So, just a little bit of titanium. Nothing too much. I'm joking, of course, it's actually a lot of titanium. I do still have the backup titanium that's in storage. Um, at home base, but we really are at the point where we just need to start using up the titanium. Because when I'm not playing Astroneer on stream, I'm farming up resources almost constantly. Just because this this project just takes so many resources. Like, oh my gosh, so many resources. So, the, num the resource consumption. I'm also the reason why I'm creating such a massive buffer. Like, if you've seen any of my Dyson Sphere program stuff, you know I'm a big fan of buffers. 
But the reason why I'm creating one here, how does the planet even hold that much titanium? Uh, it doesn't. That's due to, and that that's it goes exactly with what I'm saying right here. Um, it's due to a something that's been going on with the auto extractors for a while now. That is due to like how they're coded and where the titanium will automatically regenerate. So I am holding the, I am farming up tons and tons and tons of titanium against the day that the devs fix it. And also I'd like to finish the project quickly, you know, to do it before it. So that's, uh, it, 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 because I have to rely on this titanium, there's simply no other way that I can. I'm just, um, uh, if the devs fix it, I'm just sunk. So yeah, I, ju I just work with it the best I can and get it moving as fast as I can. There's only so much I can do, but farm up a crazy amount of titanium and get it moving. It takes a ridiculously long time. So yeah, it's just a whole bunch of AFKing while I'm watching the streamers or doing other things outside the house, and then just coming in and refreshing everything every, every so often. This should be the last silo. Ah, no, don't switch out. No, 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 bad. There we go. Also, I find it slightly weird that you that it doesn't hi it doesn't let you use it while you're highlighted over the center. It makes it kind of hard, makes the button repeater a little harder to use, in my opinion. But I mean, I see why they do it. So yeah, that massive buffer is against the day that the devs ever decide to patch that out. I should be okay because I'm, I'm because I'm an older save. But I don't really necessarily know. I need to get some some stuff printing. Yeah, this is all just basically going straight into uh, into bombs. It's always super satisfying to watch auto arms work. For some reason, the third one is all, the fourth one is always just a little bit behind. Yeah, does that answer your question, Astro Dude? I also I tend to be a little bit cagey when talking about that exploit. I really do not want to draw attention to. It. The project is maybe finished. You know, it's something the devs are, act are actively working on, which is a little scary. Yeah, that one hotfix illustrated to me just how vulnerable this project was to something that I thought would never be fixed, but the devs decided to just keep going. And they just decided, oh, well, we're going to fix this. And there's nothing I can do about it, so yeah. In your opinion, what's better, snails in your backpack or QTRTGs, drill mods, and oxygenator? I mean, you'll never see me using a drill mod except in very rare cases. Uh, for instance, I was putting down an astronium farm, uh, which I'm also going to be farming up astronium against a similar day, because you can get really good rates from astronium. But you'll never find me using a drill mod. I personally view the uh, terrain tool augments as largely useless and just a big old power suck. Just takes up a lot of inventory space, but my personal stance on snails in the backpack is they're really useful early game, and maybe in some special circumstances. Uh, for instance, I do like to use Princess a lot when I'm cleaning up for the Nova's project because if I fall down and die, if I fall down, I don't want to die. Um, but you know, there's they have very specific use case scenarios. They're very good for early to mid game, but practically useless for late game. That is just my opinion, and I'm open to uh, having a discussion about it if your opinion differs. 
Also, this scrap is from, from the Nova's project, and even though I'm not probably not going to be counting scrap, I kind of am just trying to keep it sterile as well. And by sterile, I mean unused. So yeah, Astro Dude, what's your, uh, what's your opinion on all of that stuff? My standard kit loadout is two hydrazine jetpacks because it gives you a lot faster upsies, as far as I can tell, at least. And two QTRTGs, one oxygen, one hoverboard, and occasionally when I need to do something down on the core, I'll bring a I'll bring a drill mod three. But I also take soil along. That leaves me six slots for fuel, which is runs out a lot faster than you might think. Jetpacks do chew through fuel a bit, so until you have like a good like the snails, I hey I I totally love the snails. They're Pretty adorable. I think there could be improvements made to them, but I'm not super qualified to speak on those topics. Uh, I think Victoria, I think Victorious, Banglorious Gaming is a little bit better of a hold on it than I do. Although he, he tends to be a bit cynical, although what am I saying, I tend to be a bit more cynical about other topics. Uh, I do tend generally agree with his takes on it. Princess Sylvia for Light, Princess for Protection. Yeah, I mean, I've I never really cared, <coughs> cared that much for uh, too much lighting. If I need light, I just set it up with these. Like, I set it up with these guys because it was constantly night and constantly annoying, but... Oxygen from what's his name? Yeah. I know who you're talking about, I just don't don't remember the name. The names are cute. But they are a little bit strange. I mean, it's perfectly well in keeping with Astroneer. So far, no malfunctions with the factory, which is nice. Made half of the bombs we Factory is working quite smoothly. But yeah, I think they're... Really, uh, since, since the vast... I think it was a good update since the vast, vast majority of players stay early to mid-game, and nobody really does a whole lot of stuff late-game with Astroneer, unless it's in creative. I think it was a really... I think it was a very solid decision on the devs' part. I should have had that refilling. Uh, I think it was a very solid decision on the devs' parts to make them geared so heavily towards mid and late, or sorry, mid and early game players. I think that was a very solid decision and definitely justifiable. Me personally, it's not my favorite update, but it's definitely cute. And we could all do with more cuteness in our lives. Eh. Um, just this just in. Minecraft being bad at navigating through a game. <laughs> bad at walking and everything. Also, for those of you guys who don't know, I can't reach these right now. Um, if there's anybody new watching in chat, but as soon as you extend your terrain tool, your reach also extends. So what I'm doing right here is I'm hitting as I'm hitting E and then I'm clicking immediately, which takes in my terrain tool because as soon as you click on something, you back your terrain tool. So I just hit E to grab something from extra distance. It's quite a little handy feature. I think it was honestly originally a bug, but then the devs went feature, not bug, and it became a feature. There's a lot of things that I really wish they would have left as a feature. Uh, primarily, the invincibility one. But, um... The invincibility... You know, the invincibility of platforms to explosives. It was very strange, but it really helped me out a lot in the early stages of Noah's project. But I can also understand, sadly, why they had to fix it up. Hope you have a good t good rest of stream. You have to go to sleep for work tomorrow. Good night and blow up Novus. Thank you very much. I plan to blow up Novus. You make sure to have a good sleep, and you you can rest assured that I will make sure that Novus pays for its crimes. I guess I was gonna say something that sounded sinister, but I, I couldn't think of anything on the spot. So just pretend with me that it was sinister. All right, just pretend. And meantime, have yourself a good sleep. Thanks a bunch for dropping by.
And congratulations on redeeming first, by the way, again. Eh. It's just in Minecraft can't make its way around a simple button. And also doesn't know squat about placing things even remotely in a normal fashion. I also love the hoverboard. It's really nice for personal mobility. I'm gonna need another platform. So I see see that thing over there? If I bring out my Tarangel, oh, that one is within reach. So it gives you a big reach extension if you do that. I was uh, browsing on the Reddit for Astroneer the other day and I found out that there's actually a couple players who don't really know about that. So try to help out as many players as I can. And if you guys have any questions in chat, please feel free to ask them. I um, have over 2,000 hours in this game. If there's something that I don't know about the game, I want to learn it. So try to find try to find things in the game that I don't know about. Uh, yeah. For instance, I learned from Tactile Object the other day. He said that the uh, old canisters that would on, old, old medium soil canisters that would only hold 16 um, soil or uh, those canisters would cause massive lag if done under certain situations. Now, I have no idea what he means by certain situations. I think it's interesting. Um, and I think obviously any any lag in Astroneer can be mitigated by making an object not physical by putting it on a platform. Um, obviously, this could be an exception. Why did I ping that? This could be an exception, but I I don't think it would be. It doesn't stand in following with what I know about the game, but I am kind of interested to know. Oh, come on. Yeah, I was kind of afraid of that happening. Alright, where'd you miss? That may just have to be something that I'm Tolerating. It's not great, but I mean, that's the sixth bomb we've made, and we had no problems with the previous four or the previous five. Yeah, I was really hoping that I had one of those old soil canisters around, but I checked my Sylvie, my uh, Sylvie, ah, uh, Silva base. There we go one that's really, really old. That's my oldest base. That was from when I first started playing the uh, the game on this particular save file. And, well, let's be uh, frank, I don't have any of them. Which is kind of sad. And I actually know the reason for that. The reason is because I, they came out after the medium storage silo came out, and I was already doing medium storage silos full of soil canisters. And, um, medium storage silos full of soil canisters were, at the time, much more space efficient. There we go. Not space efficient. Space efficient is the word I was looking for. Uh, those soil canisters actually were space efficient at that point, because they would hold 24 so cans of soil on a 2 slot, as opposed to 16. And then the game, the game devs changed it, and they made it so that Overall, the canisters are more efficient because they were, they're were they just straight cheaper. So, initially... Oh, shoot. You know what? Just stand there. Okay. Initially, I didn't even print any because I was just like, okay, this is baloney. I'm not, I'm not doing this. And honestly, I kind of wish I had. Because then I would, ha it would have... Because I'm the type of guy I keep everything around. So, I would have had a cool little memento. I wonder if that problem that I had might be fixed with making the auto arms just straight on instead of fancy and curved. It's not a terrible idea, but it does mean a lot of reworking, so I don't think I'm going to implement it, at least not anytime soon, unless it becomes a major issue. I don't think it should be something that I'm going to worry about too much. Um, as I'm sure you'll remember, Actually, I don't know if you guys will remember, because you guys may or may not have been here before. 
before when I had something on the back to make sure that they were all in the ex all in the ideal positions, I didn't account for the fact that maybe the auto arms would grab the one that they weren't supposed to and grab something from the other side. And then we ended up with a fairly regular problem of auto arms running out of space. I'm not pressing the right button. And so the auto arms would regularly fail like they did on the previous one. It would fail to grab one of the silos and then we would just have a bad day. Nice thing about this save. I thought I grabbed the wrong thing for a second. Nice thing about this save is that at this point it's kind of historic. Something that one thing that I have that is for sure pretty treasurable. Well, not like super valuable, but you can definitely no longer get it. Is I have a starting platform. That is a medium platform that was renamed to originally come with the uh, with the initial launch drop. That was before missions were added, and that'll that's something that'll become rarer and rarer as saves. As, as like the game goes on and fewer fewer people have older have old saves, but something that I'm mildly proud of. I also do have a um, a, a bunch of old uh, corruption bugs save on Silva specifically. I don't necessarily know what it was from. I remember it was from a historic where the game like had a major terrain update. I know for a fact it wasn't terrain 2.0 because I know for a fact terrain 2.0 was introduced in the 1.0 release of this game. This save was made three days after the 1.0 release of this game so it can't have been that. And the reason in fact why 1.0 would invalidate all previous saves we might have a problem here. We didn't have a problem here. That's good. Um, so I know quick that shows very quickly that it's not going to be a constant problem, it's just going to be an occasional thing. And if it's an occasional thing, honestly, it's not worth the work of re rewriting, of, of uh, repositioning those platforms, because those platforms are very precise. And they're also wired up to a bunch of things, and I don't want to redo that. Um, yeah, I think we're good. So one thing that I have been doing, wait, I don't think you guys are... I don't think that's full. One thing that I have been doing is, um, wait, what was I talking about before? I was talking about, I don't actually entirely remember. Got sidetracked. But anyone in chat knows, remind me, please. But, uh, if you don't, if you don't know or don't care about it, then don't worry about it. I took damage running into a large resource canister. Great. All right, the bombs are ready. Let's go over to let's hop over to, over to Sonia to uh, check on the hydrogen. And we'll uh, land at the base and we'll receive the benefit of our automatic refueling system. That's not the right base. I wish you could put beacons with X's on them. That would be something kind of cool. That way you could like mark old derelict bases or something. I don't know. I think I just feel like that would be really cool to do. Yeah. See, it's got 24 now. All right. Let's we need to do the switcheroo. Before I do that, let me just I can make sure that everybody's got something. I don't want to have any empty canisters. Yeah, I think we're good. So all this is, is making sure that I can have the ah have the hydrogen organized and ready to go. And that switcheroo feature that the devs introduced is one of those small under the hood type quality. 
quality of life changes that is just so convenient and so amazing. You know, I could say, a t as a fairly experienced player of this game, I could say a ton of negative things about what this game does badly, like how it's too easy, or how it doesn't cater to the needs of a f fan base that wants to build something big. But honestly, today, I just feel like focusing on the positives, because everyone's constantly talking about the negatives, and, I mean, at the end of the day, even if it's a negative, even if it's an overall negative... That I've got with a game that's got like a major issue that the devs aren't addressing and feel like addressing then it's still their call but that's not going to change the fact that I love this game I feel like that sometimes goes a little um, under discussed it is very easy to criticize a game developer they didn't do something that you think would make the game better balance purposes I think honestly it's just at the end of the day it's not worth it talk too much about how awful this is. Obviously, the devs want their product. And sometimes people in the community, like myself and other people, can feel very much unheard by the developers. But usually, this is not intentional. And usually, this is simply because the devs have an overwhelming amount of feedback. So, I don't know. I just feel like talking about the positives today. Even though this game has lots of issues, and has lots of problems, and has things that could easily be fixed, or maybe not so easily be fixed, I still love this game, and it's still a great game. And I still love destroying planets. And the fact that this game is pretty much the only game that allows me to do that is something kind of special. Like, I don't really know any game that's not directly intended, like... Destroying planets. Actually, I know there's like a couple of games that are based around planetary destruction, which are really cool. But this game's not intended for planetary destruction, but it still lets you do it. That's a good sandbox game. If you have a game that isn't intended for something, but you uh, you can still do it. Because that has always been a burning question of mine is like, okay, man, you can dig just about anything, right? But what if you destroyed an entire planet? What if you dug out a whole planet? And I've seen a lot of people in streamer streaming communities and all that around Twitch who just have a very similar question, and they're just like, hey, I wonder if you can stream the planet. I want oh, sorry, stream the planet. You know what I mean. Destroy the planet. And they're like, I wonder if you can destroy the planet. Because it just seems like you can mine anything in this game, so... Logically, you should be able to destroy the planet. Obviously, minus gateways. Nobody thinks that you should be able to destroy gateways. Um, the uh, the one thing, though, is I'll just send them a picture of the Novus Project, and they'll be like, wow, cool, you can. And then they'll promptly proclaim that they're going to go do that. Which, of course, is funny, but it's that they're actually not going to, because... It takes some serious realization and planning to figure out exactly how big of a project, scale of a project this is going to be. And I'm just destroying a moon. I'm kind of just proving that it can be done in adventure mode. Which I firmly believe it can. And we are at 96 power, that's correct. So we're now good to get loading up. So the reason why I did that big switch out is because this massive atmospheric condenser farm is going to be working in the background while we actually blow up this hydrogen. And we, while we load and blow up this hydrogen, that farm is going to be working to produce more. So by the time I'm done, then it's ready. Well, probably not completely ready, but kind of close. And I mean, I haven't been doing two or three rounds per, so it's not a huge deal. But it is something I generally try to do. I generally just Make sure that I use the, uh, the switcheroo process and then ship. And for those of you asking if it's uh, super expensive to ship things via shuttle, because obviously the shuttle uses hydrazine, actually the shuttle is probably one of the cheapest ways to ferry things not only between planets but also around on planets. Because you have two extra large slots and you only use up um, you only use up, like, 
an eighth of a hydrazine per uh, planetary trip. Actually, you use up a quarter of a hydrazine per planetary trip, round trip total, but it's just a one way, it's an eighth. And you use up half of a hydrazine canister on a, um, on a two way trip to a different planet. So really, you can just, I can take, I can take these there and back with very, very little hydrazine cost. And as someone who's late game, and definitely can still afford the hydrazine cost, it becomes more about a cost of time and efficiency. It's like I could take these on the backpack through the gateways for completely free. Way more time consuming. And I could also ferry resources from my various resources the, on the planet to my home base and not have to, uh, I could, I could do that with a rover, free, essentially. No fuel cost, if you're talking hydrazine cost, it just, but the thing is it takes a lot of extra time. So with a shuttle you can just hop up and then hop back down and hop over and all around. Hello, Glacio. Also, I like to see this thing shrunk, and I'm also slightly annoyed because there's actually another space that we could be using in the shuttle, and it always a little bit it makes me sad when they when I realize that space is there, but we just can't use it for whatever reason. I think it would be cool if the devs made like a mission, um, made a mission unlock that extra slot or something. I think that would be really cool. And again. It really, it really does not impact the shuttle all that much. It's just something kind of fun. Yeah, I remember, I remember a time when that switch out feature was not there, and it was very annoying to transfer things. And so I'm very glad that switch out feature was was done. All you have to do is hold something that'll fit on the slot, and then highlight an item of the same size, and then highlight an item of the same size that's already on the slot, and then it'll switch it out with the stuff you got in your hand. That is something that's so simple, it's just mind-breakingly good. And also, those bites that I just gained, those are from a passive farm I set up using proximity repeaters. And there is a platform out there. I'm gonna need to, just, I'm gonna need to go grab that. But those types of things, they're just massively simple and massively user-friendly when they're introduced. And thing you can always you can always reliably say about Astroneer is that it's a very user-friendly experience. It has its but it has its issues, like uh, primarily sticky terrain is the one that's kind of in vogue to talk about right now. But it definitely is still a very user-friendly experience. And in fact, most of the complaints online come from the idea that it's actually too user-friendly in its experience, which could be argued as kind of a good problem to have. Now, of course, you want to balance everything properly, but when the devs have the devs have prioritized user experience like this, they um, they did a good job. And I mean, there's not really anything that can just make can, can make me say otherwise because they just did a, a really good job. Like, see how this is highlighted now? Now I know for sure that it is um, it is highlighted, and that will as soon as I click like that. It switches it out. I did clicked the wrong time, but that's fine. So, all that, that um, fun stuff with blanking on words, all the fun stuff with like making your own everything, is what makes Astroneer a good game. Now, of course, there are several areas where, again, I'm trying to talk about the positives. Because I feel like talking about the positives today. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, also, you guys will notice my file, it's okay, it's a little bit laggy, but it's not exceptionally laggy, and I've got half of a planet missing. Given the fact that these types of games are, um, really write the changes to all the changes to the terrain to your save file, 
this it, it's actually quite impressive that it's not laggy at the moment. Not a lot laggier. Because, okay, my save file size might be 113.3 megabytes, but I still am able to run the game on my halfway decent PC and stream it. I think honestly though, people talk about like updates that were really great and I always try to say that my that my favorite update was the paver. Because before the drill existed, canyons and caves were the nemesis of, of rovers with drills on them. Before the pavers existed, there were just... there was no way to combat it. That's a nice view of the crater. But then the paver was added. Although, and I don't even know what update added the switcheroo. The switcheroo feature. I don't remember. I remember a time before it was added, I remember kind of... I remember it being added and me thinking, okay, this is kind of interesting, and then using it and being like, you know, this is actually really cool. I just don't remember when it was added, though. I'm gonna have to look that up at some point. If I have downtime during the stream, I'll look it up. Yeah, that switcheroo feature is, I think, honestly, one of the most rated features. Everyone uses it all the time. I use it very heavily. As you guys have seen today, I use it extremely, extremely heavily. And still, it just it doesn't get a lot of credit, but everyone just uses it. Those are the kind of updates that I think are really good. Whenever a game le releases an update that helps out the fan base a lot, it's just under the hood updates and for all user friendly experience or user friendliness updates, I think it's a I think it's a good idea to call those out as good things and just say, hey, good job on this. I don't know. I think that's probably gonna I'm gonna try to be more consistent about my stance with Astroneer and just use say most of that going. Okay, I I can rag on this game. All day, but at the end of the day, I still love this game. It's still a great game. And it's still the game that inspired me to start streaming. That. But the fact that you can do stuff with this game that you could also that that is normally reserved for games like Dyson Sphere Program or like Satisfactory even though it's completely not required. The fact that you can still do it, that they added the capability to do it, it's really good. I personally think there could be more reason to do it. I think that would help keep players engaged longer. But the fact that you can do it at all is extremely good. Switch and switch. No, over. I said move over. There we go. I'm just being picky at this point. Lag spike, by the way, is because every single time you enter a vehicle, it saves. I used to find that extremely frustrating, and there, I've had a couple of crashes where the game just crashed, and suddenly I was back in the vehicle, and I didn't expect back in the vehicle, I expected it to have lost a lot more progress. So, it has saved my neck a couple of times. Oh, just barely clicked it. Straight through the planet, through the crater, up through the terrain. That's how you land a shuttle. You don't go above the ground, you go through the ground. That would be a very dangerous philosophy for a space agency to have. Yeah, overall, I just think SES has done a massively good job. I think that's something that deserves to be recognized, you know? 
you know, after the Halloween gas, where do doing this trans this simple transfer just felt so, 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 so stressful. I think this is this is this transfer rate is now very peaceful. Chill, very peaceful. Eight today. Stop it. So Astroneers always had like some base automation. And like People talk about that before the automation update, how the automation update really added automation. It didn't add as much automation as people thought, because there were still things like furnaces would take items from one side of the platform and put them back on another side once they were smelted. And that type of thing made it super easy to just sm smelt something and then leave it. Like, I was doing auto smelters long before auto arms were even a thing. They weren't big. But they worked. I would just, uh, I, I used to say, essentially back in, way back in the day, that I would, the currency of my base was a certain kind, a certain type of storage. Like, for instance, the currency of my base was medium storages at first. Then when the medium storage silos were added, gradually as I got enough titanium, I started making the currency of my base medium storage silos instead of medium storages. And you can kind of see the progression in that. But basically I would just take like a full medium storage of something, plop it on a smelter, plop it somewhere else, and it would just work. I didn't have inter-platform... Wait, did I let that fill up? I did. I didn't have inter-platform automation, which is what the automation update added, and granted it was amazing what they added there. But the um, the platform automation has always been very good with Astroneer. Now worked our way through two hydrazine. It's kind of funny because we should work our way through exactly six hydrazine as, over the course of this entire. Uh, actually, no, no, no. Wait, it's three hydrazine. I think. Pretty sure. Yeah. Not 100% sure, I don't remember because I haven't kept track of it for the longest time. I used to switch out the thruster, or the full thruster, and then I would load up another. Switch it out as soon as the thruster ran out, but that was a little bit nerve wracking. Depots have just been such a uh, nice little subtle thing. It'll just refill your. As soon as it. Whenever you land at a at a launch pad that's equipped with If anyone wants to know how it's done, by all means, please feel free to ask. There we go. Yeah, this should do two, and then... Yeah, I... Now that... Should be, it should do two silos and then a silo minus three medium storages. Yeah, medium storages used to be the unit of currency of my bases. Right now, large resource canisters, which are amazing and have come such a, are a testament to how the game has come such a long way. Right now, those are the currency of, of my bases. They're the most efficient to haul. Their size, they just really work. I look forward to seeing what the game devs add in the future. I hope they don't take away what makes the Novus project possible, but there's really nothing that I can do if they decide to take it away. I'm sure they will have a defensible reason if they do, because it's kind of a fringe case. I do hope they'll wait at least until I've finished the Novus project. I'm getting a little low on jet fuel. Well, 
one slightly annoying thing is when I forget, this is a me thing, this is not a game thing, when I forget to retract my, um, my hoverboard, and I just completely forget to retract it, and then I'm like, why am I slipping all over the place? Oh, it will be because I forgot to retract my hoverboard. Definitely the hoverboard lives up to its name, it's very slippy. Makes you kind of, it's not terribly realistic, but it does kind of give you the feeling that you're actually hovering. Just so slippery. I do kind of wish you could go a little faster on the hoverboard, but the devs have been implemented a speed limit on everything in the game, so. Makes sense, the hoverboard. And yes, there is an absolute speed limit in the game while you're inside a planet. While you're outside of a planetary, outside of a planet's atmosphere, I don't really know entirely what limit is above, but I think it's usually above the limit, or I think it's usually whenever you're below the limit that gravity takes place at, which is the, uh, the orbital limit right where the shuttle orbits. Uh, once you're right below that limit, then there is a definite and immediate speed limit effect. If you're going too fast, the game will just straight stop you dead. I think I actually know why that's in place now that I'm talking about it. Because if you're going too fast, usually the only the only two possibilities going that fast are if you are a... Uh, you will never reach that speed by falling, by the way. That, that speed is... A, Far greater than you would achieve by falling. I should know. I fell the entire way down from way above a planet. So, Chris, way down, way above where the planet actually gravity to all the way down to the surface. So you will never accumulate that speed with gravity, as far as I can tell. However, the only two possible reasons you will be ever reaching such speeds are if either you are glitching out. Horribly, like touching out, or if you're using a rocket rover. Now it is limiting to rocket rovers, but it is handy if, say, you're on a, you're on like some kind of winch contraption, and you're just going so ridiculously, stupidly fast that you can't really do anything, and then the game just stops you dead and drops you down to the ground. That I can see as very helpful and even life-saving at times. With QTRTGs being uncraftable and all that, they become really valuable. And suddenly, the reason why you don't want to die becomes breaks down entirely to the fact that you don't have to, that you have QTRTGs on you. They're also so useful for just everything backpack related that it's it's very common to have them, and you get them very early game now. So it's very common to have them, and it's also very common to not want to lose. Them. Did I let you fill up? I did not. Here, go fill up for a second. Can I set you down? Ah. For me just not being able to warp platforms. Okay, now you're filled up. I got stuck on that one singular platform there for, like, way longer than I should have. Ah. I just love being me sometimes, especially the more stupid I get. Alright, gotta move on. That was the third hydrazine that I used. I don't think it's six six hydrazine steep. I know I could measure it in clusters, so I know it was divisible. Either three or six. But that was my third hydrazine. So it it's gotta be six. I guess it makes sense, because I thought I was doing like only eight bombs, but these are not equivalent to bombs. I'm hauling twelve of these, and since hauling two of them takes half a hydrazine, I guess that makes sense. This, these are not equivalent. 
use 12 of these silos to get 8 and 8.25 bombs. This is not, this is, I have to switch this out. Bomb is not going to be enough space for it. Okay, though. It'll, it should only give us three silos. Three, six, now it should be, yeah, it should only give us three blank silos before, or six blank silos last time, now it should be nine blank silos this time, which leaves us with the four. Just so you know, any number that you see on the gas canisters, like that 20 out of 160 that you just saw on that medium gas canister, should be divided by 5, because every single one of these lots of hydrogen actually has 5 hydrogen. And th those, they're counting the, each individual hydrogen. Which is what made the Halloween gas so unique, because the Halloween gas only ever came in one unit, singular unit. Or I didn't have the whole five hydrogen thing. Yeah, three. Okay, off we go. Back to the planet. Sanya, please. Hey, look, there's my base. By the way, that shuttle is there covering up a natural landing spot, which is a trick you can do if you want, if you have a natural landing spot or a extra launch pad quite close to where you want to normally land. Why do I have that? Let me grab two hydrazine. I need to get rid of that debris pack next time we get back to Novus. I know where it came from, but I'm surprised I didn't see it before this. So a little confused as to how it got on my backpack. I didn't... I don't recall going that near to any of the machines that deal with scrap. I'll plop it back. It was possibly when I was flying to drop off a, uh, a full canister. That's probably what was happening. Not full canister. Oh, yeah. I bet you 100%. I just grab it from the side, maybe. There we go. But nope, but, but thank you. Right. Doing that because it's all. Alright, fast forward, you can have a new, uh, you can have a new canister. Oh, okay, I thought that was closed due to a glitch. I didn't know that was actually closed because of issue. Makes sense. 
this scrap farm is um, probably one of the better ones out there. Who knew that scrapping all the random stuff you get from blowing up a planet is pretty profitable. So I do have methods of recourse if I should by any chance, if my method of obtaining resources happens to go, um, happens to get patch. I do have a lot of buffers. I don't really know if I would have enough to finish out the Nobits project, but I definitely give it the best shot I had. Got a bunch of, um, tungsten, which I can convert to scrap at a 1.5x rate. I have a fair bit of astronium. And I'm actually far gonna start farming up more, which I can convert to scrap, I'm told, at a 3x rate, thanks to the new trading platform mechanics. Let's see. I'd have to take a look at the new trading platform to figure out exactly what it was. But I just know that there was something that ended up in the resulting e times uh, scrap benefit. That means that's big. If I can get one singular, um, if I can get one singular thing of type, uh, one singular thing of astronium, then I can get out of that three LRCs of scrap. And then out of those three LRCs of scrap, I can get three LRCs of titanium, because I'm pretty sure the scrap to titanium ratio is one to one. Not a hundred percent sure. It might be two to one. I'd have to double check. I don't have an actual trading platform. Check us we'll check before we do the actual experience. do appear to be taking a fight or a bit hit. Apologize. Cover soon. It says we're back green, but the kilobits per second are still really low. I guess it must have reduced the quality. Alright, we just have this one silo from this bomb. Fill up. For any of you wondering what this is, this is my resource vacuum that I use to vacuum up resources at Novus's core. Because lots of resources fall down. Also, I'm a little sad because um, there isn't. Yeah, one of the mo one of the recent updates to Astroneer seems to have made the use of Astroneer's mod loader invalid, and I had been using a s one singular mod to gather reason to gather resources from the core faster, because auto arms are very susceptible to lag. So I was circumventing that with a data pack, but not really anything I can do about it. It appears that now that the now the uh, mod loader for Astroneer makes Astroneer not want to load my save file for whatever reason. No idea why, but it just is what it is. And I can't really complain because it's not technically actually part of the game. It's just a little sad. But yeah. On the bright side, I'm still able to uh, farm up resources at the exact same time that I'm gathering stuff down on the core. So I can make more efficient use of my time in this game. This is, uh, has a very strange name. Okay, 
so that's by, um... That's actually the name of the artist. Philanthropy. And the next artist is Weird Inside. The next artist is called Tommy. Y'all choosing some really weird names for your mixing studios. things to talk about with the Noah's Project. It's because the prep is still super long. Even though I have reduced the prep time drastically by the sheer amount of automation that I've had to employ, prep time is down from like nearly two hours down to like one. Obviously I'm going pretty slow today. Not not going super fast, and even even though I'm not going super fast, I'm still we're still at just over one hour of streaming, and we're nearly ready for the round to go. Let all that aside, let aside. I need to switch this out. There we go. All that aside, it still takes a while to prep for the Dovis project, and it still is a bit of a monotonous task. I always say it makes perfect content for streaming, but then that's only really if you're an experienced streamer, which I am not. And you are very good at talking and yodeling on the people not in the chat. And I'm not very good at that. Alright, and that... That's gonna be like five or six. I think six um, medium storages. Also, this 8.25 bomb thing per load, per, um, per load is really just a coincidence. I did not actually work that out intentionally in my head at the end, at the beginning. I just started out with a certain production rate. I built up a bunch of them, and I was like, "This is what I want to do." And then I wanted to double it, so I doubled it, and are. And this is just a really nice succinct. Really nice succinct result. I put two L2 silos. Go. Ah, hey, we like to get we get to look at that secret compartment that we never have access to, and also the fact that I'm right there with nothing in my backpack like normal. Okay, we'll land and then we'll have a uh, we'll refuel. Yeah. Anyway, I just I just love this game a whole lot. This game is absolutely amazing, and if you have not played it, you definitely should play it. What I'm doing in here is very extreme, and just obviously destroying a planet. It takes a lot of work, and it no, and it um, it takes a lot of work, takes a lot of dedication, but you know, that's not something that's required for this game. So if you're intimidated by what I'm doing here, then um, you don't have to don't have to worry about it because you won't have to do it in this game. I'm just kind of more showing the extreme ends of what this game can do, and just having fun rather than actually showing what you should do in this game. I don't necessarily recommend destroying the planet to just anyone because it loads your save file size and it lag is an issue if you don't know how to take care of it. So lag comes primarily from two sources in the game. Uh, number one is items that are on the ground and free to have physics interactions even if they're in eight well they, they don't necessarily it's a lot better if they're locked 
like floating in midair and locked. It, help, it does help the game save resources, but they still do take up some resources with that approach. And right there. Anyway, those items that are on the ground would be much better off inside a large resource canister. And then also the sheer just amount of stuff that you have. Oh, sorry. The sheer amount of stuff that you have does also increase the amount of lag that you will encounter. But primary issue with lag comes from having a whole bunch of stuff that's interacting with the ground, interacting with each other, and interacting with everything around it. That that type of stuff is really that, that type of stuff gives the game huge lag, especially with larger quantities of items. Fortunately, it's rather area specific. Terrain lag is much more like whole save file type of lag. But the majority of where that lag applies is not frame rate, it's where it applies to saving. So the, the game saves whenever you enter a seat or a vehicle of any type. It just will automatically save for you. It also saves upon exiting and upon duplicating the file. So it's pretty much, uh, it saves a whole lot, which is nice. It auto saves at certain game events so you can predict when it's gonna auto save. And you can't, you can predict that you won't be auto saving in a uh, vulnerable position because even though you can auto save in a very, very inconvenient position, you won't be auto saving in a death loop because the uh, chairs are always they always grant you immunity. Now you could be saving in a spot where the chair just completely dumps you out in the way of some hazards. Even that can be fixed by just respawning at the home at the um, starter base. And here, and here. These are the last two. Then we get to start blowing up things. Check that, uh, check out that trade platform. I'm sure titanium is one. Exactly how we would, I want to say it was solid fuel jump thrusters. But it was something that asked, that it was like, you get two scrap out of it, and then you can, well, you get, uh, you give it, you give, okay, so you get one and a half scrap out of it, and you get two of it from Astronium. Alright, that's the eight bombs, and then we're gonna do, then it's gonna be half of a bomb. Why did I take damage there? I don't know why I took damage there, but I did. Also, something I'm thankful for is that my new job, and hence new source of income, has allowed me to uh, subscribe to a couple of friends' channels on Twitch. And that is something I find enjoyable. Uh, I should not have done that, but oh well. It works. Alright, that is the last of the... Um, Medium gas canisters. And we're gonna take this back to Vasania and then we're gonna drop by Glacio. Check the uh the trade platform for a couple of things. Then head back to Novus to actually blow up the Novus project. And I'm gonna make a save backup. Which I haven't made a save backup in several days. Actually several weeks more. So, the several weeks since the last save backup has me a little bit nervous, just in case stuff gets corrupted, I'll lose a whole bunch of resources, a whole bunch of work, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, 
this is nowhere near, this farm is nowhere near ready for the switch out again, but it should be ready by the time we're done exploding everything. It only takes it about two hours. And I reckon the explosions will take about an hour. And not Novus, not Novus. We're an empty shuttle, so we're gonna go ACO right here. And here's my and here's the home base. It has a bit of lag loading in just because it's so big and massive. All right, let's check the um, let's check the trade platform. Okay, so Astronium. The solid fuel jump jets is two. Solid fuel jump jets go for one and a half, so that's three. So then, if I go up here, scrap to Titan. Right, okay, that is two to one. Right. So that means one astronium, one thing of astronium can get me one and a half things of um, of titanium. It's not great, but it's definitely better than the one to one. And that means, yeah. So then I've got quite a fair amount of scrap. I'm gonna start farming up scrap. This whole thing is gonna be scrap, but. Got a decent amount of scrap, that should help out. Also have a decent amount of titanium. Because frankly, it's just easier to get it from the source. I'm also going to expand this outward a bit. And, uh, or paint it, and then we'll add more platforms and everything. Should be hunky-dory. And enter. Off to the Novus Project. There we go, Novus. I do like those bigger hitboxes. At first I wasn't a huge fan of them, but they do help on clicking on planets when they're really far away. Bigger hitboxes are helpful. Oh, that reminds me. I need to grab that uh, that platform. Thank you, Astroneer. Tell me about that. Yo, uh, yo, thank you. Fast. I have extra large platform sitting everywhere because I once accidentally left extra large platforms printing overnight, and um, yeah, that was a big mistake. Yoink, there we go. Let's use those two for the next round. Alright, I'm gonna check on the core. Let's go make sure that everything is good down there. I don't think it's super clean. But it, it's definitely not having a huge lag impact up here. Oh yeah, definitely not very clean. And the reason why it just froze right there is because I hit F to enter the shuttle. Because I held the uh, the right click button. To allow me to quick enter the shuttle from very far away. Another handy feature which I hope they don't get rid of. Alright, we're going to go grab our usual loadout of four hydrazine. Spare and one uh, titanium. Or one titanium, one dynamite. There we go. Alright, uh, let's duplicate the safe. Okay.
Okay. Save name. The four. Big. Number 47. Enter. Confirm. Freeze. And unfreeze right about now. There we go. Click confirm again just because I do it. I probably don't need to do it, but it does. It seems to make things better. Also, funny, funny, funny thing. The before big uh, still the scrolling is still not. Working. There we go. The before big boom thing is originally back from the first Novus Project round, where I was just like, I don't know entirely what to call it, so I'm just gonna call it big boom. And it's kind of fun to note that hey, we've got like the before activated the gateway type of thing. Uh, that was between rounds 28 and 29, post snails was just fairly recently, and I made that back up because I lost a couple of rounds before that. These rounds are kind of out of order. I have a couple of duplicates because I accidentally, I, I there was one time I accidentally duplicated all of my save files, and uh, I deleted most of the duplicates, but apparently not those. Anyway, I'm gonna save here. That should put us on top. No. Oh, come on. I've done significant things. I've moved around. There we go, now we're on top. Now it looks like it should. All right, let's take bomb number four and uh, off we go. I don't really know where I'm gonna put this. I haven't thought about it at all, but we kind of working on the other side just to get ourselves a nice little line around the planet. Should I go up in the shuttle and do it? I don't know if I should. I think I'm not gonna bother. I mean, theoretically, it really doesn't matter as long as I'm destroying the planet. Destroying the planet is a bit here. go anywhere. Make sure. It's outcrop. No. Back. Bite me at some point if I don't. Yeah, the, the reason why I'm destroying these is because I don't want the big old circle, the big old spheres of the uh, bombs areas of effect to have to overlap too much. I'm trying to be like decently efficient here. So yeah, we're just gonna make sure that everything's nicely. You know, if the devs ever make it impossible to, uh, if the devs ever, like, destroy my method of making this, um, and acquiring all the resources I need, then this will become impossible to do. I'm the only person to ever really. At least in theory. Someone, might, someone else might find a way to do it. In the future, but... I mean, so few people would attempt this anyway, and then the majority of them would just attempt it in creative. I think I'm, so far I'm the only one crazy enough to attempt something like this in adventure mode. Which is totally, totally fine with me. I mean, it 
ain't about the title, but the title sure is nice. There we go. Nope. Not on me. Let's put you right here. Uh, that placement's not ideal. I think it needs to be lower down. Ow. Okay, let's try that. not adhering to the terrain when it goes level like that. Stop sliding around. So I just it's, just... it's just sitting in the cave at that point. I think that'll be good. It'll at least be better. Here we go. Hey, that was nice and clean. And lag spike is just from all the stuff falling down in the game, trying to calculate everything falling and bouncing off of everything else. And it clears up. Which is very nice and gratifying. I wish this stuff realized it was in the air, though. Alright. Get back in the next bomb on the road. Probably not going to gain enough height. I'll probably have to fly a little bit quickly just to get up there. But should. That bad. Also, yes, I have been really enjoying Dyson Sphere program recently, and uh, I wanted to stream it today, but today is Astroneer Tuesdays, and I really don't have enough space for another Dyson Sphere program stream on my hard drive, so that will have to wait another day, either tomorrow or the day after. But for those of you guys who love to see the Dyson Sphere streams, like I know there's a couple, you guys just love Dyson Sphere probably a lot more than I do. Um, it will be coming. Or not, I love it. Not because I don't love it that I'm not doing it, it's because I also love this game and I want to make sure that I'm paying attention equally to all the games and keeping a variety going. I need more fuel. And I really should just go around and use up the rest of this tiny little bit of fuel that I've got. Because it's not really that big of a deal. Let's take one of these, and I'm going to put the, um, put these extra, there we go, these extra lapis chess pieces on it. Because I've been putting off getting an extra, getting another silo to put these chess pieces on, but I'm only going to get more of them. Never going to be able to get rid of these things because I don't want to scrap them, I want to keep them around. I'd like to total the entire amount of lapis chess pieces that spawn on this particular planet. So all of this intel that I'll be giving the Astroneer community is kind of valuable. I will have been the only one to actually and it's full breakdown of resources. In a reasonable degree of accuracy. Uh, that, I want hydrazine. hydrazine.
And at some point, I'm going to work on probably like a massive post or something. Hold on a second. Um, some form of Astrodeer forums. Maybe Reddit or something. I don't know. At the end of the Novus Project. With a full resource breakdown as well as a nice little picture of the planet from orbit. Or the, uh, really the core and the gateways from orbit. Because that's all that will be left at that point. That's a big old outcropping right there. I think is that one of those things that I have been perpetually forgetting to uh, use a custom explosion on? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, it's really big. Bit big, big, bit beefy for a custom explosion. I think I'm just gonna. I think I'm just gonna go with one of these. It's simpler, and it's faster. That's not going to cover nearly all of it. That whole bomb needs to be lower down. Just get this as low down as my terrain. Go! Go. Ah. Stop it. Ah. Uh. Uh. That's not great, but... At least the center of the explosion is lower. I think I'll end up with floating terrain right there. That was a bit close. Yeah, I did end up with floating terrain right there. Lag spike. Oh, God. Alright, get closer to it so it'll get rid of the lag. I know, go towards the lag. Not something you usually think about, but... I'm not gonna release my frames until I go closer and let the game calculate everything out. There we go. Now everything's falling. Alright, I'm gonna do the real quick rundown of this guy. Just to destroy it. I mean, it, I left a good, I left a decent amount of soil. Not like a ton, but I left a decent amount. But it is nice. I feel like it was a good compromise. Alright, I think that's a good, uh, good second bomb. Get started on the that just involves traveling a ridiculously long distance across the planet. This crater is so massive that during the daylight you can actually get completely lost in it. Which is something I find quite interesting. Alright, next, next bomb. Okay, and I actually ended up with the timing. Ah, stop it. Go. The, uh, with the fuel switch outs. I have to start printing more TNT at some point, but I've got 
For now, I've got a ton of TNT that's sitting here, and I've got some that's all over back at the base. I want to use all that stuff up first before I print more TNT. A lot of that TNT is left over from events. I think that specific TNT that I'm using up right now is stuff that I printed. Yeah, 100% sure. I know I brought over a bunch of TNT and packagers, but I'm pretty, I don't know entirely what it is. Custom explosions. So take out smaller pieces of terrain. Got the uh, idea for the TNT printer that lets print the TNT where I want it. Oh, really? You're gonna do this? I should be able to set you down, right? Oh, great. Got it. I went a long way down, but I got it. Managed to get it. I think I want to put the, uh, the explosion right here. Got a nice big old outcropping. Could do with some taking down. Right about there. And yoink. Oh yeah, that's some good placement right there. Also, by going close to it, I make use of a handy astroneer roll. Holy cow. That was a resource explosion. End all resource explosions. Everything falls down. Nice and simply. Well, almost everything. Um, anyway, I'm making use of a Astroneer game mechanic, which also exists in other games that load similarly to Astroneer, like Minecraft. They just load chunks of the world around the player. The player goes close to help. Oh, no. Alright, we'll be here for a little bit. This. Alright, well, at least this is going to be extremely satisfying. Not that satisfying. And, anyway, so the way it works is the game loads. Stop it. I want you to go up and inward. There we go. Game loads stuff procedurally around the player. So, as a result, the, um, there we go, uh, the player, well, it has a little bit of latency built in, intentionally, I might add. Uh, it has a little bit of latency built in because they want to make sure that they don't, oh, that's good stuff. They want to make sure that they don't just, that if the player leaves someplace, it just doesn't automatically unload. And then it just, and then as soon as they go back, it's unloaded and it causes extra lag. It actually saves on frame rate if a player can go straight back to a place without having to load it back, unload it, and then load it back in. At least as far, that's my understanding of it. I'm gonna get the stuff that's near the edges. That stuff is easier to get. Nice. A decently satisfying experience, but it is also slightly frustrating to get the last little tiny bit of everything. I really am tired of all these resource caches just sitting in the uh, in the air, refusing to cooperate unless you find them with the terrain tool. That was a really nice explosion until all the resources magically returned.
not going to complain too much because I have a feeling it might be linked to the same exploit that I use to ensure that I have enough resources. This. But it is mildly frustrating. I think I'm going to handle try to handle it actually from the top down. I'm going to grab a decent looking polygon here. And we're just going to go through the top. And run out of soil, that's what we're gonna do too. Let's go double check for everything down here. Did we take care of what we could? Looks like there's still some stuff over here that I could have gotten rid of. All right, that's probably pretty good. All right, let's harvest the necessary soil from the walls. go. So the reason why I'm adding little tiny bits of terrain is because it just helps to grab that stuff that's just barely sticking out from the surface. And actually that stuff is much more likely to, to glitch out than the other stuff I've found. I don't really have any way to confirm it, but it's just been my experience. Others have had a different experience, that is totally fine. Not trying to invalidate any of that. That just has been my experience. And so that add a tiny bit of terrain or flatten a tiny bit has grab those things. I first learned it when I was looking for more effective ways to mine out resources. Tapping all Everyone's hot. Sometimes it does weird things like it did right there. Oh god. I, I thought I, I, I didn't know why I was falling. I didn't know why the camera was looking down all of a sudden. The, the game suddenly realized that I was in an illegal spot. And I must be punished for my sins. Full on soil. Let's head back down. Uh, let's go this direction. That will allow us to take down some of those stalactites. This is good enough for now. I think what I'm gonna do is let's try to find a good polygon that will stay over this resource vein. Not that. That is way off kilter. Also off kilter. That one seems pretty decent. Go with that one. Okay, then we can do something like that and get a whole bajillion tons of laterite. Once you cover over a vein, and then you mine on top of it, down in it, or in its specific direction, and then it realizes, wait a second, I'm in the middle of the air, then it really starts to, to go your way. Alright, I think I'm a, I think I made a big enough mess that I'm just gonna clean it up later. Because that's gonna distract from the point of the stream and make it a little less interesting. I will handle that off stream. 
So this should be pretty easy to handle. Right, you know what I need to do? I need to drop. Close. There we go. And if you're wondering how I activate them, uh, the jetpacks when I have my backpack on, but from that's the context keys. Spacebar does not work when you're using the jetpacks uh, and your backpack is open. The context keys do. Context is key. See what I did there? I don't entirely know what I did there, but I thought it was kind of smart. Let's grab you and you. Wait, I need TNT. I know that it's technically dynamite and dynamite is Actually, very different from TNT in real life, but in games, they're largely the same thing. There's a whole interesting world into the difference between Dynamite and TNT if you look on the internet. As long as you look from credible sources, you should be able to kind of educate yourself a little bit. It basically has to do with... Um, Dynamite is pretty much just nitroglycerin in clay. TNT is a different form of high explosive. And we're slightly above the atmosphere. We've gone for so long that we're kind of above the atmosphere here. What are you? Oh wow, you're a section of mountain that I left. I think I know why I left it, because there's all those floating bits of terrain. Are you terrain or are you ground scatter? You're ground scatter. The reason why I can tell that is because ground scatter, the cursor does not appear, and terrain, the cursor does appear. Alright, let's handle this right here. Where am I going? What is life? I am stuck. Ah, uh, what is existence? What is reality? Pain. Okay, I can see. I can think. Mind, I could see. Come on, stop going close to me. That is one thing. Sometimes a little, um, interesting about this game. The camera will do you in a couple of times. But it's all good. Still an awesome game. Did I set it off? I did set it off. That's what the massive lag spike is for. Please don't come back, resources. didn't come back, so we're all good. I mean, really, honestly, I can save a lot of fuel by dropping initially and just getting a blast on. But, but saving on fuel by using gravity and the fact that I go really, really far horizontally when I fall. So realistic. But I just haven't been thinking about that, honestly. I am doing stuff pretty low down. I think I'll do it next time. Yeah, if you're... I am far enough away and low enough down at, that, at this point that I could just pretty much... I can save a lot on fuel. Almost barely use the... Uh, almost barely use my jetpacks, hardly at all. Just because I 
use gravity instead of else. Instead of my jetpacks. No, don't grab that. That back. Grab the whole platform, not a single hydrogen. Really start to save a bunch by hardly using the jetpack at all until you get there. I think I'm gonna put this one a little bit higher up actually. This higher up section is definitely sticking out. Probably gonna take two bombs to kill. Lately at least. I'm going to drill downward right here. I think right about there should be a good spot to place the bomb. And the reason why I'm standing still and not flying down into it, because even though I'm not going to have perfect reach down there, doing that and standing still is a lot easier than going in there and seeing absolutely the diddly diddle. Yeah, that'll handle that'll handle the things I wanted to handle. And it retreats into the fog. Nice. Alright, we're gonna wait for all this ground scatter to despawn, like that. Hey. Not all of the despawns, for whatever reason. This stuff is solid as ground. Right up to the point until I grab it, and it falls. I just basically have to go around with an auto-clicker and click every little tiny piece of debris. A lot of work goes into this behind the scenes. Then we head back. crater is so big now that I very gain all my height back just from moving horizontally. Alright, we're gonna grab you, and we're gonna grab TNT. And we got three more bombs to go. Stop. Thank you. Give me a second to stop driving my nose into that one particular little side of that platform. Sometimes the hoverboard just gets on its brain that it wants to go into a specific direction or location. And if that's not where I wanted to go, well then screw you, because I'm going where I want to go. That's what I imagine the hoverboard saying anyway. Hoverboard kind of talks like a rebellious teenager in my brain. So what? Oh, we're rebellious. We didn't 
can hardly use up any f All right, that's definitely not going to handle everything, but it'll work some. Yeah, ooh, that left a lot more than I thought it would. That's not ideal. Ah. Uh, that stuff's a little weird. This is kind of cool, though. That's actually a really thin little bar. I think that's a bar that even tactile object would have difficulty in making. And I just made it by accident. It's kind of a stylish little window if you think about it. That's kind of funny. I'll probably I'll probably try to tease tactile about it later. I'll be like, look, hey, I made with my with my explosions. I made a bar that's way tinier than is easy to make with uh, with the terrain tool. stand here so I'm not using up jetpack fuel while I'm digging this out. Yeah, I do want to make sure to dig this bit out because this bit is just... Yeah, it's just annoying. Yeah, the part's kind of cool. I'll show, I'll, I do kind of actually want to show it to Tactile, even though it's, I'm, I'm kind of joking about giving him a hard time. I might give him a little bit of a hard time, but you know. Tiny little extra bits of terrain. Good. Mostly. Now we're good. Back we go. This one will definitely get all, all of our altitude back because we are pretty much almost at surface level already. to feel like you're a lot higher than you are actually are especially when you're in a just in something where it's impossible to distinguish exactly where the surface is like this big massive crater right, second to last bomb terrain is kind of reverse glitched, which means that it actually just disappears once you get close to it. But it definitely looks like it's there from far away. Most glitched out terrain looks like it's not there from far away, but when you get close it loads in. And it can be really, it can be really, really. I'll say that. Is this that same spot? Yes, it is. Go 
up the terrain over here. Have a nice, conveniently placed cave layer. There we go. And dynamite right there. Ooh, that might be a bit far right there. I'm gonna move that. Let's pick up the box, box the, the platform. And let's scoot it away. The hair. That should take care of pretty much everything. Definitely. And it's obviously not going to reach all the way to the surface, but... Nice. That's about where I was expecting it to go. Oh geez, more crumbling stones. You know, I really don't like these whoopsies. Really don't like these crumbling stones. They are like the one of the most resilient pieces in the game. They resist explosions so darn well. I have no idea where I am or how I am. It's just so out can thing. There's a vague line ahead of me. Definitely. Helpful. Last bomb. And we're going to grab this is the last bomb. And for those of you guys who are, I do the de I do the backups before the round starts and not after. The simple reason is if the ba if the explosions cause a crash ever, then I can just revert to right before the explosion happened, and then I can simply fix everything. Oh right, this is that place. It does look like I got a ton of the stuff, a lot more than I thought I did. Encouraging. I'm gonna move this guy one crater over. Place him down here temporarily. And I'm just gonna start drilling until my, uh, I run out of range of my terrain tool. It'll take a bit longer because this is T2, T2 terrain. Should be okay. And out there. No? Farther? There we go. Pretty far down. Alright, and I'm gonna do. Right there. Let's try putting a dynamite right on the surface there. Eh, 
Eh, not great, but it'll work. Really not great. Alright. I will have to deal with that at some point offline. Alright. Come on, are you done? Oh, there's, the, there's those explosions that were holding back all the frames. Yeah, for some reason, before those resource explosions, everything just likes to hold on. Oh, yeah, more of these came back. They just weren't loading in, that's why. Alright, and that has been detonation round number 47. Yeah, thank you guys very much for tuning in. I'm gonna call the stream here when I get back to home base. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and I appreciate every, each and every single one of you. Astro Dude, thank you very much for dropping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. Everybody else who lurked and didn't say hi, thank you very much for lurking. You helped me out a lot. I appreciate that. Uh, where? Just overshot. Yeah, thanks to everyone who was lurking. That helps me out a ton. You guys are welcome. I really appreciate it when you do. Um, obviously, I love to say hi to you guys, but if you don't have the time, or if you're working and you're doing something else, I totally understand the working. And, uh, yeah, I will see you guys all at a later stream. Next stream is going to be either tomorrow or Thursday, and it's almost certainly going to be Dyson Sphere Pro. I'm getting pretty comfortable with the Elvis Project doing run one round a stream. I could cram and do two, and I might do two for, like, maybe charity or something. But for now, I think the stream has been working pretty well for the last bit, and I'm probably going to continue doing it. So, thank you guys very much for tuning in, and, um, I will uh, see all you guys on the other side. Have yourself a wonderful, beautiful day. Bye!